Hello everybody and welcome back to the Inner Sanctums YouTube channel. Today I'm your host Lachlan Dan and we're going to be talking a bit about the AFL trade period and specifically about the Isaac Rankin to the Adelaide Crows deal which happened on Monday afternoon. The trade went through. Now in the trade we're just going to talk through the trade details first. So Gold Coast have received pick five, a future third round selection and a future fourth round selection in exchange and Adelaide receive obviously Isaac Rankin, pick 46, and a future fourth round pick, which is tied to the Fremantle Dockers. Now, a future fourth round pick, especially when it's tied to another club, is very hard to keep track of because of you might use it in this. Tra Obviously, you can trade up until draft night. You might use it to bundle up a number of picks to get more into this year's draft. And with just pick 23 and pick 46 as the indicative draft order for the Crows, it's very they're going to want to be more involved, you would have thought. Even that, even if, if that's with mid sort of selections, I'm going to say that around the pick 30 mark. Probably won't get into the top 20 now. Probably a bit hard to do that unless they eliminate themselves from next year's draft, which I don't think they would want to. Well, firstly, Isaac Rankin. We'll talk a, bit, a little bit about the player. So, obviously, a forward pocket um, tra drafted out of West Adelaide. So, it's a South Australian product, which was obviously a massive factor in him wanting to return to the Adelaide Crows, which we'll talk about a bit more later on. He's played 48 games for the Gold Coast Suns. In that time, he's kicked 57 goals with a career high of four, which he achieved this year in round 16 against Collingwood. Let's talk about Gold Coast first. Obviously, in 2018, when you draft a pick three as a small forward, you want them to be at your club through there, even if it's not for the whole career. Like, that's obviously the main goal. But even if it's not for the whole career, at least for the first sort of 10 plus years, get them through that first free agency period, at least. He's obviously missed the 2019 season with injury, and that carried over a bit into the start of the 2020 season, and then he was finally given an opportunity against the Melbourne Demons. Now, in his debut, he showed us what he can do. He kicked a couple of unbelievable goals, and everyone sat back and went, wow, that is why he was pick three. This kid can dominate the next, that can dominate for the next... 15 years, hopefully barring any injury concerns as a minimum, or not as a minimum, but as a rough number. So Gold Coast, I can see why they're disappointed to lose, but some of the commentary that came out from the Gold Coast um, officials, I guess you could call them, shocked me a bit. Now, Gold Coast have lost a lot of players over the years, including in this year's trade period, um, which We'll name them. So it's Josh Corbett's headed to the Freeman and Dockers. Jack Bowes has headed to the Geelong Cats. And obviously Isaac Crankin. Jeremy Sharp was another name that was touted as potentially leaving, but it looks like he's going to stay as we record this on deadline day. So from that, what you can tell is he was obviously going to be a good player and he was patchy throughout 20... Uh, through the remainder of 2020, but he showed glimpses throughout the year, a couple of big flying marks, um, freakish goals uh, from all sorts of angles. 2021 rolled around as a similar sort of year, bit injury plagued, bit form plagued, didn't have the year he would have necessarily liked. So coming into the 2022 season, he needed to stand out. He needed to sort of show everyone, I'm not just a flashy player. I don't just provide glimpses. I can provide this team with a spark and with a dangerous small forward that opposition teams hate to match up on. And I can be a small forward in the mould of the current superstars. And when I say that, you're talking your Charlie Camerons, you're talking your Tom Papleys, there's a few others I could name, Michael Walters, I guess you could say, Tyson Stengel's obviously a recent premiership player, with Geelong, Toby Green's another one. So there, there's plenty out there. Gold Coast have a number of players on their list that they can put into the Isaac Rankin role. Because Adelaide have mentioned, now that he's come across and it was mentioned in the lead up, which I'm sure it would have been discussed at Gold Coast, Adelaide just haven't thought of this idea out of thin air, is that they want to transition Isaac Rankin into a midfielder, which we'll get to a bit more down the line when we get to what he brings to Adelaide, but we're going to look at it from a Gold Coast point of view first in this video. So they have players such as Nick Holman up front, Ben Ainsworth, both who have been in and out of the side in recent times, both who can provide an option. Another one is Oya, 
who we saw come into the scene a bit this year. Alex Davies is another one. So they've got the players. And another one I wanted to mention, he only came into, onto the scene in round, I think it was round 19, he made his debut against the Brisbane Lions. And in between round 19 and round 23, he really showed why he was a top 10 pick. And that man is Elijah Hollins. Now, Elijah Hollins has, he received a Rising Star nomination in round 21 against Hawthorne. Showing everyone that he can be a midfielder, he can go forward, he can do it all. He's a very exciting player to have on Gold Coast lists. If you're a Gold Coast fan and is someone who drafted out of Victoria country, uh, could potentially be, and I don't want to risk it for Gold Coast fans, but could be someone that could be potentially a son for life. So they have the players on their list. But as we mentioned, they did gain pick five. They lost pick seven in the Jack Bowes trade uh, to Geelong. But in this, they have gotten themselves a better pick. We're just going to go through a, num a couple of names on the Inner Sanctum's recent power rankings for September in the AFL for the AFL draft. So Will Ashcroft is going to go pick one at Brisbane. So even though Brisbane don't currently hold pick one, and as GWS says, they will bid. And everyone will essentially slide down. So Gold Coast will still have pick five. It'll just be listed as pick six because they're going to pick will, Brisbane are going to pick Will Ashcroft. Now, it's been highly touted since these rankings that Aaron Cadman is going to be most likely the number one pick and he will go to the GWS Giants. Harry Sheasel is one that's been touted to North Melbourne. And there's a, a few other players involved in between. So we've written down a couple of names that could be options for the Gold Coast Suns in the draft. So we're going to look at some that are sort of similar in a way to sort of similar in a way to what Isaac Rankin would provide. So firstly, you've got Bailey Humphrey, who's ranked at pick eight in this. Uh, he's explosive. He's powerful. He's got impressive forward craft, and while his composure and field goal kicking isn't sensational, it's something that can be fixed. Now, when I say that, I put AFL coaches around him, and it's something that can be fixed. It's not the end of the world. It's not like it's an attitude problem. It's not like it's a major skill level problem. It's just a bit of composure. And that can happen with an 18-year-old in there as they get nervous in those times. So there's a number of options. So Elijah Holland's probably, we're just going to go a bit more on him. So Elijah Holland's probably wouldn't start in the starting Gold Coast midfield. You would have a setup of probably just Took Miller, Noah Anderson, Matt Rao, David Swallow. So Holland could be moved to half forward. He can provide that spark that Rankin provided. Now, obviously they don't have... They now do not have a genuine small forward like Rankin's of Rankin's quality, but it's not the end of the world. It's still an okay pick, or still an okay haul they've gained out of it. They have a good indicative draft order now, and it's it's an exciting time for a Gold Coast fan, even though they have lost a player. They walk away with pick five, and when you walk into a draft with pick five, it's game on. So now I'm going to go to the media comments, which... On the line of Stewie Jew and Tony Cochran, of also they were disappointed, took Miller, as we said as well. That's fine, because they're from the club. What I found a bit interesting, and it's something that I haven't really seen much from the media, is a few saying that he's poorly advised, he won't be able to handle the pressures of Adelaide and all of that sort of thing in a, in a two-team town, even though he's coming from a two-team state, obviously. But... Rugby league, let's be honest, is the main sport over there. AFL in South Australia is number one. But if Isaac Rankin, in my view, so well in his build-up to the draft to allow him to be a top three pick, he should be able to handle the pressure fine. And he's got experienced heads in the forward line, which we're going to get to, and around the ground that can help him in this sense and in this play. And he's also got a mix of exciting young players who he has mentioned he's excited to play with. I found these comments a bit of a surprise, but I can see sort of where they're coming from. 
but I think he should be able to handle it fine. I, I, I do. So now, glossing over that, we will move over to what he brings to the Crows. So if you look at it from a Crows perspective, Adelaide traded Charlie Cameron after the 2017 Grand Final to Brisbane, so from 2018 onwards. Eddie Betts left the club after 2019, so from 2020 onwards. And since then, we obviously know. After those two departures, Charlie Cameron a bit from the start, and obviously since Eddie Betts' departure, amongst other things, of course, they've plummeted, including their first ever wooden spoon in 2020, a bottom four finish in 2021, and not much better in 2022. But you have now picked up a ticket seller. Isaac Rankin sells tickets. Do not make a mistake about that. Adelaide, from 2014 to 2019, let's just go with that bracket range because 2020 and 2021 are hard to judge on crowd because of limited capacities and all of that sort of thing. And before that, they were at at that at Amy Stadium, I should say. So Adelaide were consistently getting 50,000 or 45,000 plus every week. It was very hard to buy a ticket on game day unless you wanted standing room. And even then, good luck. So if the Crows can get fit and firing again, it is very enticing to play in front of, let's just say for a Crows home game, it's a 50,000 seat capacity. If it's sold out, you're going to have, let's just go 42 to 43,000 Crows fans in there screaming his name with the Isaac Rankin number on the back all knowing who he is, all knowing what he brings. That is a massive enticing move for a player to want to come and play football for your club because he can play in these roles. It's been said they have a slow midfield, and that's probably fair enough. They have a lot of contested ball winners and not a lot of outside, not a lot of inside runners, I should say. Not a lot of good outside runners. Jordan Dawson, obviously, naming one. Paul Seedsman, another one. Jake Saligo burst onto the scene a bit. So... A young man they drafted last year, Joshua Shelley, winning a Rising Star nomination within his first month of footy, showing it and five goals on debut, really showing everyone what he can provide. So he's got that. And they want to, Adelaide have mentioned, they want to put him into the midfield along with Rankin. Now, this is not saying, when they say this, this is not saying they want Isaac Rankin to turn into one of the competition's superstar midfielders. They want him to go in there if the game's like clogged up and all of that sort of thing, which obviously happens in footy when it's a contested game, they want him to burst through, make quick runs out of the midfield and get the ball forward. So if we look at the Crows forward line, Joshua Shelley, which we mentioned, Taylor Walker, who's an experienced head who can look after Isaac Rankin, he can because he's done it in the past. He's had to over the last few years with the the new generation Crows forward line we've seen. And then further than deeper, Rory Sloan's back coming back from an injury, which we saw in him go down in round five in unfortunate circumstances and missed the remainder of the year, but he's committed to go. He may not be a mid, a bona fide midfielder like we've seen in the past. Same as Ben Keyes. Those two will probably rotate. Ben Keyes has only been at the club for a few years and he may still be young, but he has experience because of the amount of football he has now played. And then deep in the forward line, was probably would be where Isaac Rankin would stand alongside Darcy Fogarty and Riley Philthorpe. So Fogarty, Philthorpe, Walker, and obviously Shane McAdams there too. Luke Peddler's another one. There's a couple more players on Adelaide's list. We obviously don't know who they're going to draft to with pick 23. That could be anything really. We don't know what they're planning as well. So, But based on that, you would think that would be the forward setup. So if you've got Taylor Walker, Darcy Fogarty, and Riley Philthorpe looking after you, you can have players like Sloan, Rochelle, Rankin, Saligo, McAdam, Peddler, all bursting through, making quick runs and kicking goals. That is very enticing for Rankin. We saw, now, a lot of people talked about Adelaide overpaid for Rankin with the first initial figure, which was reported, but that has since turned out, Mitch Cleary saying that is not, the case anymore it's a much shorter deal it's only a three-year deal we don't know the money figure and we probably we may not ever find that out but he can provide a lot of 
we saw what Eddie Betts provided. Uh, he had his own pocket named after him. He's probably behind Tony Modra, one of the most cult figures in Crow's history. People loved Eddie Betts. People can love Isaac Rankin the same way they did Eddie Betts because he provides that spark, because he's got that flair. So if you're a Crows fan, I think you can be really excited about Isaac Rankin coming to the football club. I know I am. He is going to transform that forward line. And there's a lot of, there's a few comments saying he may, they, they wanted more. And why are we only just getting a small forward? I've seen around the Crows uh, fan groups on Twitter, Facebook, and various other social media platforms. But what you'll know is that they're sort of just taking it one moment at a time. And they're probably pretty happy with the forward line set up. And it is a dangerous matchup for opposition back lines. So Isaac Rankin. In a fit and fire and crows forward line, provide major damage and slowly increase that goal tally. He could increase that by 30 to 35 goals next year with a full 22 games under his belt quite easily. Probably even he'd be looking at 40, to be honest. And that's roughly two goals a game. Obviously, he's not going to kick two every week, but he'll have quiet games. But he'll have big games as well where he'll get off the leash and kick five. That obviously happens in football. I think 40 goals is an achievable target. And yeah, I... Crows fans have a lot to be excited about up front, uh, not just this year, but for future years to come. The three-year deal has some concern, but you've got to think about it. A Crows fan coming home, he's mentioned that. He's mentioned his love for the club. He, he'll be backing himself in three years to get a bigger deal. So that's a personal decision. That's not a club-based decision. And I can't imagine why he'd leave, at least until at least for 10 years, and then he might reevaluate for premiership success depending on where the club is at. But the Crows in that time would probably want to be progressing in their rebuild and, and doing all that sort of thing. So we've seen the Crows forward line this year was a bit skinny at times. He can provide that spark and just say, I'm having that forward pocket position. I'm going through the midfield. I'm providing a spark. So plenty to be excited about for Crows fans. Uh, enjoy the rest of the trade period uh, on deadline day. Um, there's been a lot of moves made, uh, some which we mentioned. Uh, and then head to the Inner Sanctum for all your footy stories, all your sporting stories. There's some good authors on there that um, write a lot of good quality articles. So, yeah, head there. Keep watching the videos and thanks for watching.